Yeah, Kelly, thank you very much. You're with Jack Fusco of uh, uh, Chenier. And what a time to be talking to you, Jack. And uh, there's so much going on, not only around oil, which Kelly just hit, but natural gas as well. And you and I were chatting before the interview, and you've made this point, and other CEOs on air and off air have come up to us, and they have made this point, that this type, even though prices are up, this is not good for your industry, is it? This volatility, despite prices being higher, is not a good thing for Chenier or the industry in general. That's right, Brian. First, thank you for having me here. So um, we saw just today prices start off at $110 an MMBTU for natural gas into Europe, and then down to 70 and then back to 100. That kind of volatility is extremely difficult to plan for. And it's just tragic on what's going on in, in, in Europe, both from a geopolitical sense as well as these high energy prices. And we're just focused on operating. So today, we processed somewhere between seven and seven and a half billion cubic feet of nat gas. That's about 8% of all production in, in America. And we're sending out two cargoes a day, and it's going to Europe. And we're just trying to help. Well, it is. And listen, it's, people say, well, how could you talk about business at a time like this? Let's be clear. Part of the reason Putin feels emboldened to do what he's doing in his stupid and murderous war is that he knows he's got Europe under the thumb of energy in many ways. Yeah. That he, his calculus is they won't respond because they need me and my natural gas too much. U.S. LNG is not the, the ultimate answer. It's not the only answer. But it does seem to be a big part yeah. of an answer, correct, to maybe help end this type of conflict? No, absolutely. You know, we just completed our $40 billion uh, investment program where we built nine liquefaction trains in, in a little less than nine years. And we just announced today another $7 billion expansion at our Corpus Christi facility, um, effectively to build another 10 million tons. We're, we're already the largest exporter of LNG in America. Um, we're, we're the second largest in the world, and we're gaining on that. And you're right, from, a, from an energy security perspective, uh, LNG is not the only answer, but it's a big, uh, a big portion of it for America. There was a headline that went out earlier today that said that you said that Chenier is sold out of LNG until 2040. So I looked at that and I thought, well, there's no growth there. That headline is maybe misleading. Yeah, I, and I apologize for that. I misspoke. So on a nine-train platform, we're definitely sold out, which is why the expansion is so important to us. So with the expansion, we'll create some bre breathing room for us to continue to sell more long-term. So you can, so for customers watching this, Poland, call. perhaps. Just call. Just call. There, there'll yeah. be some natural gas. Yeah. Answer me this, though, Jack, because here's where I get confused. I will. You operate under these extreme long-term contracts, you know, 10 15, 20 years with China or Japan, whatever it may be. And yet I hear that Europe and the UK, which is in big trouble, is buying spot natural gas. How do they do that? Are they buying the ship while it's at sea? I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, so um, two things. Um, one, the initial foundation customers that helped create Chenier were predominantly European utilities. So we're very grateful to them and they still get their product from us. We've been very reliably uh, delivering on that, on that product. Um, unfortunately, it's not enough to meet all of their demands. So whether they, have a, they had a cold winter and they needed more liquefied natural gas and, uh, and they had to buy, they're having to buy spot and they've drained all of their storage. So 